making any sense? What Jedi? The little ones. Half the size of normal Jedi. They're freeing the prisoners and my need the Jedi. You've never heard of the Millennium Fall? Should I have? It's a ship that made the capital of the Western Fall Farm. Hey everyone, and welcome to Kessel Run Weekly. My name is Danny. And I'm Kristen. And I'm Anna. And we're back (laughs) from our ridiculously long vacation. (laughs) No, (laughs) we had to step away for a little while, uh, just with some family stuff. Uh, And to everyone, uh, including you, Anna, uh, I I appreciate you guys reaching out to us to to check on us and um, to send us encouragement and love throughout this time that's been... Difficult for my family, um, and I appreciate you guys. I definitely do. Uh, I, I love that we have a community behind us that cares. You know, we're not we're not yelling about Ryan Johnson and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> we're looking out for each other, which is how it should be. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for allowing us to kind of step away for a little bit. But I missed you guys. I missed you, Anna. <laughs> Missed you. Missed you guys. <laughs> yeah, we missed hanging out and everything, um, and talking Star Wars. Right. It, I feel a void in my soul. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we needed this, so I'm excited that we're back and everything, and we're kind of back with a bang because at the end of this month, uh, August, when this comes out, I'm going to be going to Walt Disney World, Anna, for the opening of Galaxy's Edge in Walt yeah. Disney World. I'll be there. I'm so excited. I'll be there opening day. Anna, you have to come visit or or come down there and do this too. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> the next day, but I'm trying at least the day after. I mean, you're already basically there. So, no, I know. It's, <laughs> it's four hours. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I'm going to be going to the opening day of Galaxy's Edge. And so for this month, I actually wanted to talk. Galaxy's Edge stuff and um, the story behind it, all that good stuff. uh, Because we're actually starting today with when Hondo met the Padawans, which I'm very excited about. So we're going to be talking about some Clone Wars episodes um, and how they tie into Savvy's Workshop and Batu and I mean, you know, Hondo's there. So there's all that good stuff. So without further ado, if you guys are ready, we can go ahead and jump into the main topic. Let's do it. So why the big show? You didn't really have a choice. You know we have to work together. Because, Jedi, you know what we are about to attempt is very dangerous. And I may be a pirate, but I do not like taking children into battle. That didn't seem to bother you when you attacked us. (laughs) Well, today is a new day. And lucky for you, today, I like children. Yes. Sweet. So cool. So our main topic, we are going over Clone Wars uh, episodes, The Gathering, Test of Strength, Bound for Rescue and a Necessary Bond. This arc is where you have a team of Padawans go and they're looking for the Kyber Crystal for the first time. So they've just passed their trials and everything, and they're going to go make their lightsaber with Ahsoka and all that kind of stuff. And... I'll be honest, this is like my favorite, one of my favorite arcs. Like, I don't know if I can say my favorite because you can't beat Mortis. No. <laughs> <laughs> I-, I feel like you would have been disappointed with me. I was like, you know what? That's my favorite. Yeah, I'm like, okay, guys, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Later. <laughs> no, so I would say it's probably my second favorite, to be honest. Um, because there's a lot of good stuff in the Clone Wars arcs, but I really like this whole, like, the spirituality behind the kyber crystal stuff uh and and things like that and the whole journey that these i mean kids had to go through in order to really discover themselves and stuff like that um but i i love how disney world essentially took a lot of these elements and put it into an actual experience which is like the one thing that i had been saying since before galaxy's edge come out is that i want that to happen so I'm right. so excited for it. Um, but what did you guys think about the arc before we really dive into details? Uh, Kristen, if you want to start. Um, it's a really good arc. It's got a lot of lessons in it. Um, I like the challenges that the kids kind of have to go through in order to um, 
you know, accomplish, I guess, a common goal in a way. Mm-hmm. So it's not my favorite art, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good lesson arc, and it kind of gives you a little bit more background as to how people become Jedi, like how that kind of works. Mm-hmm. So I like that because we don't ever we didn't really see that in any of the movies. Mm-mm. We got baby Anakin, grown Anakin. So yeah, that reminds me. Where was Anakin? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we ever really get an answer to that of why Anakin wasn't there. I miss Cause, that man. Because he wasn't with Obi-Wan. So, I don't know. I don't either, but I missed him <laughs> a lot. <laughs> what about you, Anna? What'd you think? So, I feel like I'm not 100% sure where George Lucas was in this moment, but I feel like this is an episode heavily influenced by George Lucas. And he, obviously, Filoni is the mastermind. But I feel like this is when... It, Lucas is like, okay, here's a reminder that is also for kids. Mm-hmm. So anytime that kids are brought into Star Wars, like, I love it. Because not only do we get a reminder that, okay, let's stop all the hating. It's also for kids. But now we get to put it in a park where a lot of Disney goers are not just going to be us. Mm-hmm. But then they get to experience it and they get to experience it with stuff with Clone Wars. Because mm-hmm. I've been reading a lot about the parks and it's like, People, you know, the some people not understanding certain things, like maybe who's Hondo, like for someone that doesn't watch the cartoons. But I have a lot of kids, like I, I can already think about one specific the kid that I work with that it's going to see Hondo and he's just going to be like mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> experiences that I'm like, OK, yes, like I love that you're also hinting to like other stuff for like fans that not only watch the movies, but the show are really going to appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and I completely agree with that because I think one of the cooler things that they've done with Batu is bring Hondo in it. Now, I know a lot of people are kind of like, and it's a lot of people that don't know anything about the animated stuff. It's kind of like, oh, okay, alien, pilot, whatever, smuggler guy. But the I... fact that they, right. <laughs> uh, but the fact that they brought somebody who has a well-known reputation throughout the canon story, who is pretty much touch most of the canon characters as far as prequels and in Rebels even uh, with Ezra Bridger. I mean, he's had a hand in a lot of the stuff that's actually happened and the way that they've happened too. And so it's not yeah. like he's just been this one-off character. Like he pops up from time to time and he's the guy that you kind of love to hate a lot of times <laughs> where it's like, oh man, he's awful. But like even... Hate we, to love. Yeah, hate to love, love to hate. <laughs> Both at any given time. <laughs> Love hate relationship. It's fine entirely. <laughs> uh, but like even in this arc, like from the beginning to the end of it, you see a definitive change in him. And I love how he continuously brings up his mood. And she, he's, yeah. She's like, "Really, you're gonna attack children?" He's like, "Well, today my mood is profit, and we're here to make profit. So let's do this." <laughs> and then by the end of it, he, she's like, "So you put on this whole show for what? You know, you don't have a choice." He's like, "Well, I don't like bringing kids into battle." And it's like, "Where did this come from? You brought the battle to them." <laughs> today is a new day. Yeah, today is a new day, and today I like children. <laughs> so I like how he just kind of sways from one way to the other but like i almost feel like it's hard to figure him out sometimes to and i and i wonder if that's the main intent behind his characters to kind of you don't know whether or not you should trust him kind of thing i mean you really can't know until you just kind of have to go with your gut mm-hmm. and, and most time in most of the shows with him in it it works out but literally you're like this is a bad idea maybe it's a good idea <laughs> but it could go really bad but it could go really good <laughs> Uh, and that's it's what I love because that's a George Lucas character. That's the one that makes you think, like, okay, but what side are you on? Or like, why do mm-hmm. you those things? Is because also, also sometimes he wants to like trick you and like for you to think on both sides. Like, there's more than just like the Jedi's or like uh, the Sith or the Separatists and everything. So mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I was actually gonna mention that too because with a whole story that is either you're with me or against me, and Hondo's just like, ah, I don't know. I'm wherever the wind blows. Yeah, he's like a whole new with enemy within himself. Yeah. So. Yeah. so I think it's really cool kind of seeing him go back and forth. But like, So so real quick, I guess touching on the Gathering uh, episode, because that one, 
I, I love any time they really dive into the Jedi spirituality of all of it. Because yeah. you really don't get to see the behind the scenes of, like, how, or at least what an actual Padawan goes through from start to finish. Now, here as of late in some of the canon novels and stuff like that, we get a little glimpses of it. But we've never had a definitive, so this is, I guess, the training track for a Padawan. So it's cool kind of seeing them go through there and everything. Um, but one part that always makes me laugh, because, I mean, obviously we know how it ends. I've seen this episode so many times. But, like, when Yoda, <laughs> Yoda, they walk in, walk in there after Ahsoka's like, oh, we have to join together for the Force to, to be able to enter. And somehow Yoda's already there. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, you know, just been chilling, waiting on you guys. About time you showed up. <laughs> Um, but even with, uh, Yoda, like, I love how he go. him and Ahsoka go to such lengths to, like, almost put fear into the kids, where they're just like, oh, yeah, you know, if you don't do it in that certain amount of time before the door closes, you're stuck for a rotation. Oh, well, rotation's 19 days. Wait, what? <laughs> so it's just kind of like, I oh, know. I don't know. And it's all, it reminded me of kind of like the, uh, the campfire stories, the one-legged, Hook, uh, hook hand man or whatever. Like, yeah. You watch the boogeyman's gonna come get you. <laughs> um, but I love how like Yoda's such a troll all the time. I'm telling you, whenever he's like trapped somewhere in a cave in a forest, he becomes a troll because he did it with Ezra and Rebels, and clearly he does it and with anybody. I mean, these are kids, and he's mm-hmm. just like, oh, well, you're gonna learn today. Let's do it. <laughs> right. <You're> gonna- <laughs> Yeah, well, figure it out. Yeah. He he always reminds me of the, the old guy that just likes to mess with people. <laughs> like, you have that really, really old guy, and his only goal in life is to just mess with people. It's just for his own enjoyment. <laughs> That's better to do. Let me sit here on the porch and, like, mess with the little kids in the neighborhood. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him some outlandish thing to freak him out, and then oh, I was just kidding, guys. Yeah. But you're never gonna forget it. <laughs> um, but I thought it was cool, like with the whole spirituality of it, like how each one had their own lessons to learn, and it was almost like all of the lessons were pre-selected in a way. Well, they kind of were because they had to kind of fight themselves. They had to face themselves. Mm-hmm. Is kind of what. Yoda said in it. Yeah. It was their own demons that kind of had to... I'd be interested to see, though, with Ilum, like, to know more about that temple. Because for it to... For the, for there to be so many Padawans that have always been brought there, it can't be the same lessons. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everyone has their own lessons they have to learn and their own progress they have to make. So, it, I would be interested to wonder or to know the history of that temple on Ilum and how it does change like that. Because, I mean, out of all the things, they literally go to a room and go, hey, close your eyes and point and go that way. And then it just happens to work out that way. The force. Exactly, the force. Yeah. And it's cool because I was looking, so I was looking at pictures of the episodes. And one of the things that I I noticed, and I mean, it's on the StarWars.com website, but in that Jedi temple, they have the Mortis drawings in the Elam. Yeah. Really? Yeah, so I found that very interesting. So I was, huh. I, I was looking to see if there's like any more history, but then mm-hmm. I got to like just in that picture, I'm like, <laughs> what? This is so cool. Yeah, because they have like the Mortis, like the um, like the father and the daughter um, kind of symbols, mm-hmm. and the brother. So I thought that was interesting. So I was like, were they here and they then they left, or this is like what's going on? So I found that that's very huh. interesting. That is interesting. And this actually, I believe, because I know the Clone Wars episodes are all out of order the way that they air other than like an arc. Um, I think this is one or two seasons after Mortis as well. So I don't know, because I always thought of Mortis as kind of like its own like pocket universe kind of thing. It was kind of like these three really strong force wielders found a way in and this is my home now (laughs) kind of thing. (laughs) So it kind of gets to I don't know. That's that's interesting though. I'll send you guys a picture we can post it. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Cool. Well and it kind of see now my mind's running now too because it almost kind of uh 
lends to that maybe they are more than just force wielders like the father had said like maybe there is more balance or I don't know. Maybe they're just their influence of the original. I don't. I don't man, I could do this all or night. They, they not pass the actual tale, or were they too superior? They are like, okay, you guys are too much. We're gonna put you right. in your father, and you guys can't leave. You're yeah. right. <laughs> Ooh, what if they were the original Jedi? That would be cool. That'd be very interesting. Because yeah, when the when the father talks, he just kind of like plays it off as if they're just wielders, like. Yeah, it's just the force. That's all yeah. it is. So and everything. So that would be interesting to know if they were like the first ones to discover the existence of the force or something. I don't know. I'm off track, but <laughs> I'm going. I, I, so many questions. That's another episode. <laughs> um, don't but yeah. Fall down the rabbit hole. Oh, I I can get lost in the rabbit hole very easily. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. So I, I did want to ask this because I asked Kristen this and it was before the arc had ended. So I don't know if, if you've changed your mind yet or not, but Anna, did you have a favorite paddle one? So. Or even one that you related to? I, I, I didn't really like relate to anyone, but because I work with kids, I was so drawn into like Katuni mm. and like, her being like battling herself and you sometimes see kids being so tough on themselves mm-hmm. i see it all the time I'm like okay relax take a deep breath so i really enjoyed her arc and then for me pet petro right petro reminded me sometimes mm-hmm. of ezra yes like rewatching this like i rewatched him yesterday i was like huh ezra yeah. <laughs> I'm, all over. I'm like what so i mean that was for me yeah, I, I thought about that, too, with Petro, because, like, uh, I think Kristen asked me, too, if, if they ever show up again, which I think they show up one more time in some random arc or whatever, but nothing of significance, I don't believe. But, yeah, Petro definitely reminded me a lot of, like, headstrong Ezra. Like, I'm gonna go in and get my crystal come out, and yeah. <laughs> joke's on you, it's ice. <laughs> Yeah. That was another moment with Yoda where he's like, he's like, uh, went in, got your crystal, came out with water. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow, yeah, merciless. Like, trying to build it that he was about to kill himself because he built it yeah. the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, he's always like, oh, I'm going to be the first. I'm going to be the best. Da, 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 da. And sometimes that got him in trouble and, and everything. And I mean, he was ready to fight. But the thing was, too, is like there were a couple times where I kind of, it was one of those like, is it the seeds of the dark side or is this dude just being a kid? Like, cause there were a couple of times where I was like, man, you're kind of going a little Anakin here. Oh, that's very age appropriate. Yeah. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> that's competitive. I'm like, yeah, I could name like five kids that are the same way. I mean, <laughs> like, so how long, how old are they supposed to be? Mm-hmm. Uh, now they're supposed to be like seven. Nine? I would think so. I think, so I would say about like that, anywhere from like seven to ten, something like that. Supposedly, Anakin was too old, and he was he looked like he was nine when he nine, when he came in. Nine. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, I totally see my six years, old, five years old being like that. There so. you go. <laughs> well, and that would be something that I'd be interested to know too. Another side trail, but with like, I guess you have like your age of innocence or whatever. So at what point? does has the is the child able to make that decision to fall to the dark side or to submit to something you know what i mean so that would be interesting to know but i don't have an answer for that what's your favorite Kristen? (laughs) yes what was your favorite now that you finished the art do you have one that you just like mildly liked at the minimum because i know you didn't say you really had a favorite (laughs) kanji was cute Gunji Gun- was cute. I can't even deny that. Um, Gunji's my boy. <laughs> um, I really liked the. Um, oh my gosh, the the Angelical eyes. Oh, um, she. Gnodi. Gnodi. The Rodian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really liked her. Yeah. She didn't really play a whole, whole huge role. She was kind mm. of in the background a lot, but. She, she was, was she was the Debbie Downer, the the world's yeah. gonna end, the sky's falling. <laughs> she did her job though, she did it well. So I admire her. Yeah. <laughs> even even through all that doubt, she still did it. So yeah. <laughs> she was like, cool. Tell me where I need to be. All right, I'm on the way. <laughs> yeah, Gun- Gunji's my boy. Uh 
I actually feel like I, you know, in a strange way, I relate to Gunji and his lack of patience. Of so. <laughs> Of course you do. He had the coolest lightsaber, I can't lie. He did have the coolest lightsaber. Yeah. I mean, a lightsaber made of wood. Did you notice that? Because I was looking up, like, what you miss in the episode. Um, But there's a part where Gunji's screaming, and it's the same sound where Chewie's screaming in episode five, where he's capturing Cloud City. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he's like the same screeching sound. Oh, really? I do the same motion. Huh. I didn't yeah. realize that, but I heard it, and I remember thinking to myself, "That sounded a lot like, like Chewy, like to me." Yeah. There, there was one moment I thought I heard Holiday Special, uh, Lumpy. <laughs> he does something. I think it's right after he gets his crystal. He opens it up and he makes that little like childlike Wookie sound, and I was like, "Lumpy, is that you?" <laughs> Lumpy's in all of us. <laughs> oh. But yeah, but I, I love Gunji. I, I freaked out at Star Wars Celebration when I actually saw somebody cosplaying Gunji. I had oh, really? never seen it. Yeah, it was so good, too. Um, I had never seen anybody like that, and she she made the noises and stuff like that and everything. It was funny, too, because I tried to get her to like talk to me. I was asking her about her saber because she had the wooden saber and everything. And oh, I was like, cool. how did you get it? Da, 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 da. And the whole time she was in characters, I was like... Was she a kid? Was she a kid? I I don't know. Like I, I it was either a kid or a very short woman. <laughs> <laughs> um never never spoke. I think oh I heard her say something to somebody at one point, like as I was walking away, but as long as I was standing there, she was in character and she wouldn't break character and I was like, you know what? I can dig it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> but yeah. I applaud you. That that one was probably one of my favorite uh cosplays from Star Wars Celebration. I was just I was floored. I think it was like one of the last days too. We were on the way, yeah. We were on the way out or whatever, and uh, I, I stopped at the IG88 uh, that was at that booth. Uh, I probably was shopping then. You probably were. <laughs> you left me behind. <laughs> but yeah, How but rude. but then I saw it. It was really cool. So yeah, cool. highlight. Um, but yeah, so cool. So um, so Anna, I know uh, uh, Hu Yang has a uh, a special place uh, with you. Yes. David Tennant, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't notice at first, and I it was bothering me the first time I watched it because I, I feel like that's still when I was watching him as a doctor in Doctor Who. So I was like, that voice sounds familiar. Then I noticed it was him, and I rewatched it, and I was like, oh my god, it even walks like the Doctor. Yeah, like, it made a, such a perfect little droid that I've been on the hunt to look for a toy like that, and eh, I still haven't found it. Yeah. Um, but I, I love that he, it was, like, a droid that knew a lot about, like, the lightsabers and stuff. Because mm-hmm. I, I feel like, obviously, the first thing we see in that episode is the Petro treating the droid for bad. And I'm like, come on, guys. Why mm-hmm. do you guys have all the droids? <laughs> so I love that he was very, like, knowledgeable about it. And he had his quirky ways. And yeah. it was so much fun. And knowing that that was David Tennant. I mean, I love him, so I was like, "Oh, I this for me that was before Chopper. That was one of my favorite jokes." Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and he they hadn't topped him, but yeah. then Chopper came along, and everything was uh, Chopper and everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Chopper that everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And, and speaking of droids as well, did you notice in one of the episodes that uh, the droid that's at Galaxy's Edge with Hondo in the in the Millennium Falcon? Is actually in the episode, the oh, no. yeah, the astromech that has the teeth painted on him. Oh yeah, I yeah. saw him. He literally cool. passes by for a split second. Yeah, it's when they first get into Honda's little like layer down there, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that's scary, that's scary. And then the droid just like rolls by. Yeah. I was like, even the droids are scary. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that's a nice little hint that I appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. And then um, we were talking about the lightsabers, too, that I, I was seeing in the hologram. Oh, Luke's lightsaber is in the hologram. Yeah. From Return and of the Jedi. A curved lightsaber. Mm-hmm. Um, and he mentions a couple of the battles that happened, I think, in the prequels. Mm-hmm. And mentioned the Clone Wars. Um, yeah. He mentions some other there. kinds of lightsabers, too, that I didn't recognize. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And the colors that are, like, defined by who you are. Mm-hmm. So that was, like, the first time I think I heard about that. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. Um, which, in, in all honesty, too, it kind of 
lends a lot to Ahsoka and the journey that she yeah. ends up having. Because, I mean, yes, hers become white because she cleanses the corrupted one. But at the same time, it's kind of, she's no longer a Jedi. It's She's mm-hmm. kind of made her own path. And so she's something completely new, which is really yeah. cool. But yeah. But yeah, I love Hu Yang. He's awesome. Especially after I learned about David Tennant. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's it. He's, he's, he's my, my favorite, favorite doctor. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He's a pretty cool droid. Yeah, and he's a pretty cool droid. He's been on this ship for a thousand years. <laughs> I, I loved how aggressive he got, too. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I've never lost a fight. <laughs> he had no arms. No head. No arms, I know. Right. right, I'll do you for that. You'll what? Come here. What are you going to do, bleed on me? I'm invincible. But then here's where Hondo comes in. Yes, here's where Hondo comes in. So... What do you think about Hondo? So where do you stand with Hondo, Kristen? Um, I don't know. Hondo is a wild card for me. Um, like we kind of said earlier, he he's always like this force to be reckoned with in a way. And he, you just never know which direction he's going to go. I mean, he could either be your best friend, mm-hmm. you know, and you both get out okay, or... He'll turn on you, and you're like, "Oh, that's Hondo." Like, <laughs> oh. um, oh, he's just he's just a wild card. He kind of makes me feel like if in any way you trust him, it's your fault that he turned on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's no reason why you should have ever gone with him, but the fact that you did, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what but do you think? He's also like a. I mean, to think about space pirates, but he, it's like the definition of a pirate, but in space, which is so weird for me always to think about, but because I'm like, okay, he does act sometimes like Jack Sparrow, Mm -hmm. but then he's like the total opposite. Mm -hmm. At first he's like, oh, those are little Padawans, they're no Jedis, we can take the ship. And then he's like, okay, no, but I really like the kids. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well and i was thinking about it too because like so we do see that change from him uh with the kids and everything where he starts to from i guess from our point of view starts to look it starts to soften up on him i guess but at the same time i almost feel like he just starts to admire them because they start using tactics that he likely would have done in order to get ahsoka back to break him free uh to save the day all this other kind of stuff like joining a circus of all things <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, it, um thing that I saw t- uh, when I was watching the episode was that Katoonin's outfit was inspired by Indiana Jones and Temple of the Doom. Like what she's wearing. Oh my God. And everything. Yes. It was. That's, um. oh, what's her name? I forgot. I can't remember her name. Oh but the God. one that you said you hated in, Tem- in Temple of Doom when we watched it. She's like, Indy. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but yeah, I, I recognize that now. Huh? Yeah. That's freaking cool. <laughs> but I love how the episode's like showing Hondo with so much power, and then he flies away. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm flying. Boom. <laughs> See, I like the little, like, things that they throw in there where it's just kind of like, yeah. hey, if you're a fan of this, you'll get this, mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. Like, I, I feel like... Where, where the creatures were, like, a rancor and, like, other stuff. I think uh, Petra was a Gundark. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't notice what uh, Gunji was. He was some white something or another. Yeah. But, yeah. But I thought that was cool. I think so, too. I love that. The the circus whole that whole thing, like I think it perfectly sums up Hondo too, because yeah. especially the part where uh the two Twi'leks come up to him and they're like, Come with us and everything and he gets yeah. up and his uh little security was about to come with him and he just face palms him and throws him down. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I do what I want when I want. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was so funny. Yes. Which which makes it to where he reaps the consequences very often. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love Hondo in that respect, though, because I mean, he's just kind of is like there's really n- no pinning him. He's just a simple man trying to make his way in the universe, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but yeah. So after the 
whole circus thing and everything. So I really liked the episode, the, the necessary bond, because that's when the separatists decide that they're going to invade Florum and stuff like that. And then, so Grievous comes and pretty much humiliates Hondo. It's like, hey, yeah, you thought you were powerful. And just like slams him on the ground. And it's like, all right. <laughs> um, but when he comes in there to kind of flaunt himself around, he locks up Hondo and I, I liked the beginning of the episode, the cookie, the, the fortune cookie on this one. Because yeah. it says, yeah, the choose your enemies wisely as they may be your last hope. I was like, I yeah. mean, that's true. Yeah. Because, yeah. and, and not to get too real worldy, but it kind of made me think of a lot of like the culture that we have now. I, I just learned of this term recently. Um, cancel culture. I hadn't heard of that before. Um, essentially kind of being quick to erase people from your life when they mess up oh, and kind of thing like that, that and everything. And so it's almost kind of like you're, you just deem them the enemy. You, you yeah. erase them from your life. They're no longer part of you and you move on and everything. But when you do that, even though they may not be for you, they can be there for, I don't know. Like, I feel like that <laughs> the whole choose your enemies wisely. I think that's very, Wise. <laughs> I can't think of another way to say it. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, in all honesty, if you if you name everyone your enemy, then you're always surrounded by them. So it's not a life you want to live. And so I think that, I think with Hondo, in relation to Hondo on that, I feel like that's kind of how he is. Because even, like, even towards the end when he's talking to Kenobi and everything, he's talking about, oh, yeah, mounting a rescue is expensive. And let me see. Oh, the cost of the fuel. I had to use a lot of fuel. The general wear and tear on my men and equipment. A uh, couple of them died, I think. Believe me, Kenobi, uh, staging a rescue is not an inexpensive proposition. So you mean to tell me you were uh, staging a rescue? Not attempting to hijack a Jedi starship. You're welcome! <laughs> Stuff like that. And I, 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 just the way he is, he doesn't really, like, ever cancel someone. It's kind of like, hey, we can learn to live together. Let's calm yeah. down. <laughs> but I, I feel like he always starts, because I love how the episode started with, like, a necessary... Uh, bond with this episode that he goes like oh General Grievous I presume like mm -hmm. being in such a show off especially in front of all the pirates because he loves to be like that life of the party whatever yeah. and then he was like when they bring um, Count Dooku mm -hmm. he was like oh wait I remember I, I kidnapped this guy I think I'm not I'm gonna go step back because I think this <laughs> is worse than just dealing with the, all the little pot of ones like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. always like survival with hondo <laughs> yes it, it really is it, it's self-preservation in a lot of ways where because he he doesn't ever hate anyone that i've ever seen the only one he's just just uh, has a distaste for is dooku and grievous but because of the way that they act towards him that and i think he turns on maul at one point but then he ends up working with Maul again and all this other kind of stuff. So it's just kind of whatever suits his needs. And so... He says that so many times, too. Yeah. yeah. Where he's like, well, my mood today. Mood. <laughs> Depends yeah, on my mood. Perfect. My mood is profit. Yeah, mood. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but, I mean, in all honesty, though, I, I liked seeing in this episode the, the core of Hondo, though. That he can have a heart, even if he chooses to hide that behind the oh, flash yeah. and all that kind of stuff. He always like, does. He's a softy. I mean, that's yeah. what I told Danny too. I was like, even though I'm pretty sure this takes place before um, Rebels. But, oh yeah, it does. I mean, yeah, all of this does. You see how he gets kind of attached to Katuni, and then he turns around and has a bond with Ezra too. So mm -hmm. I mean, the man does have a soft side. He just yeah. He's yeah. just a hard-headed man. <laughs> and I feel like he's he's one of those characters in Star in the Star Wars galaxy where he's caught in between like both wars that he's just not like he's not for the Jedi or for the Sith or the Republic or First mm -hmm. Order. But he's just like they're like, Okay, you both are crazy. <laughs> and as you're surviving, yeah. so for one day I'll be for the Jedi, right. one day I'll be for the First Order. He's for Whatever. himself. Yeah. Yeah. So he's gonna do what's gonna help him, whichever yeah. way it goes. Mm -hmm. So you know what I just thought too. So I I wonder how that would be if Finn ever met 
Hondo. Which, I mean, he can He meets a Hondo like character in say, DJ. But say, but I, I think it, I thought about DJ when I saw yeah. this, when I was talking about this too. Yeah, I wonder what that would be like because you know Hondo would talk his way out of a paper bag, <laughs> like yeah. just run circles around him. Yeah, he would. <laughs> but. Yeah really funny yeah that would be really funny to see him meet a lot of the the sequel characters because Ben would just be like wait what <laughs> ray <laughs> ray oh my gosh <laughs> well ray almost kind of i feel like would be uh almost kind of like an ezra character to him where she because she knows how to work those kind of people yeah. yeah so and i think that's what's cool about the relationship and and we'll do another episode on this but like the relationship between hondo and ezra where as even though Kanan's like, back off, back off. You don't want anything to do with him. He's dangerous. Back off. Ezra's like, I got this. I've dealt with people like this. I grew up on the streets. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> if there's but anything I understand, it's you. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. That's something I loved about Ezra. So this was a, not one of my favorite card characters to start, but mm -hmm. Ezra always finds a good in people. And mm -hmm. that's something I love because I love that they portray that with a kid. And which is true. A lot of kids are very innocent and they'll see the good in people. Mm -hmm. so, but Ezra is still, it's maturing and he still doesn't lose, lose that factor on mm -hmm. him. Which obviously is not an Ezra episode, but yeah. Oh, we can have one. <laughs> yeah. But I also love like the relationship between Ahsoka and Hondo. Mm -hmm. Because Ahsoka is very, to by the books, like we still have her as a Jedi. And right now she's in a... Kind of not like a master role, but like a teacher. And like, I have to defend all these kiddos. So it, mm -hmm. it's like she also thinks about, well, I have no choice but to team up with this guy. Right. Um, yeah. And we see her interaction with him in other different episodes. And it's always very interesting because she doesn't, like, she'll start by like, oh, Hondo, you again or something like right. that. But then realizes like, okay, maybe like we can work this out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's kind of that person that, that, that elicits the disgust at first every single time but as the episode goes on it's like they've always been friends yeah. it, it's how it feels every single time i yeah. think the only episode that i remember seeing him in where that wasn't the case was when he first meets anakin and obi-wan when they're uh defending the villagers yeah um, that's one of them where i feel like he the whole time he's the villain like just straight up yeah. <laughs> and, and then he leaves and this is no longer profitable <laughs> 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 um, but I mean, in all honesty, it, it, at his core, I think Hondo is a good guy. Yeah, I yeah. think he is at his core. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm excited to see a lot of uh, what we're going to see at Galaxy's Edge from him and everything. So I've been trying to stay spoiler free. I've been successful uh, so far. I've seen little things, but for the most part, nothing too spoilery. Right. Um, but as far as Hondo being a softy, so I feel like the ultimate evidence, though, is the name of his ship. In the sequel trilogy, the Katuni. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's so cute, right? Because that's Especially the thing. Seeing his interaction with her in yeah. this episode, and you, I mean, for me, it's cool because it's like you don't always need the Jedi to give you that like boost, and right. Hondo was for Katuni, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it was cool the way he presented it with with how he encouraged her to build her lightsaber, lightsaber and everything. Because it wasn't it wasn't father like or anything, but at the same time, it was like, "Come on, let's see it, let's do it. Yeah. We're, we're under pressure. Let's get this going." And then all of a sudden, she just did it, and so it was it was almost it almost made it to where she couldn't think overthink it, and, and, which was an issue for her uh, when she was looking for her light or her crystal and things like that. She needed confidence. And that's what Yoda told her, is that she found confidence. And I think Hondo instilled that in her when he was like, let's do this. Yeah. He, he didn't doubt her or anything. or was like, oh, I don't think you can do it. He's like, this looks cool. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that was really cool in the way he encouraged her and everything. And um, especially how Ahsoka called him out after that. The, you didn't have a choice. Like, what's, yeah. what's with the grandstanding? <laughs> yeah. He's like, I know you. What's happening here? But yeah. <laughs> I think it's really cool. In all yeah. honesty, I think the, Gal uh, the Galaxy's Edge should have a full experience just like this. Like, we need to get on Hugh Wang's uh, ship. We need to be hiding from pirates. Yeah. The whole thing. Let's do it. I'm down. Yeah. It'll be physical, but let's do it. I don't <laughs> want to come into contact with Grievous. I'm good. <laughs> He's a scary thing. I hate when he crawls, Anna. 
Oh my gosh! When Grievous crawls, it makes my skin crawl. When he grabbed his hook about her face, oh no! Fun. It was like <laughs> slamming down. I was like, I want to know why that move's not in Battlefront Two. <laughs> I know why it's not because I throw my control at the TV. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> the end of Battlefront. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, well, can't play anymore. No TV. <laughs> I also broke the game and the controller. Yeah, right. <laughs> One thing led to another. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited to see Hondo in person at Galaxy's Edge. I'm I'm so thrilled. Yeah, I have to wait till January. You do, you do. Wait, you're not going? She, she will not be at Galaxy's Edge the opening day, no. I wasn't invited. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go now anyway, though. It's fine. <laughs> I wasn't invited. Kristen, let me know. I'll go January, too. There you go. Yeah, we have a whole family trip planned for January where all of us are going and everything. It's going to be cool. So cool. that's going to be exciting. So that's when she'll see it. It, yeah. it won't It won't be like Star Wars Weekends all over again. You'll actually get to go. <laughs> hey, you'll go when there's more stuff open because not that's true. everything is going to be you, uh, I think Rise of the Resistance should be open by then too, shouldn't it? I think. I don't know. I've seen a lot of progress pics where they're actually like really building. I so. it wasn't, but I might be wrong. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I haven't actually seen a date. I'm making wild assumptions. If somebody doesn't take me to Animal Kingdom, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> I've been yeah. two times, and I've yet to go to Animal Kingdom. Oh, I'm have you really there. not? I've not been. We were going to oh, go. Oh, you have to. Oh, let me know. I'll take you, Chris. Okay. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> we're Animal Kingdom, man. <laughs> we'll see the lions. We'll see the lions. <laughs> Simba's oh, there. God. <laughs> Saw Rafiki though, and I wasn't even in Animal Kingdom. Oh really? Yeah, remember? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were we? I don't remember. I think it was Hollywood, Magic Kingdom. Magic, yeah, I think it was Magic Kingdom. He's just randomly out where he shouldn't be. Yeah, in, and I was like, in Frontierland. I think is where he was. It's like, why is there a giant baboon in the middle of this colonial area? <laughs> I'm not a baboon. You are. I'm just <laughs> yeah, that's but yeah, line. but cool. So, so did anybody have any final thoughts or anything like that you wanted to add? For on the episode arc or Hondo in general, anything? Yeah, tapes in Slave One. Did you see? Yes. Oh yeah. So I, I couldn't remember. Is this after Boba and uh, Ara Singh? So he kept their ship. Yes, and he repainted it. The yeah, symbol. I saw the symbol on there. So yeah, okay, yeah. okay. I couldn't remember if it was before or after that arc when we were watching it. I was like, wait a minute, that's Slave One. Yeah, I looked. <laughs> Like, wait, did I miss it? I totally missed it before. Yeah. <laughs> now that I noticed, I was like, ah, oh. but then I noticed that he repainted it. Yeah. So, very interesting. I thought so too. Yeah. I'm interested to know what other special vehicles he has. Yeah. Who, who else he stole from? <laughs> right? Or commandeered. <laughs> <I was> like... <laughs> but yeah. So cool. Kristen, you got anything? Nope. Hondo, like him or love him. He's a wild card. <laughs> you can't love him. Of course, of course. You can't really hate him. I mean, in the show, you're kind of like, I'm disappointed in you. Right. I'm really disappointed in you, Hondo. That, see, that's the weird thing. Is like, you. <laughs> you always kind of have that element of disappointment. You never truly hate him. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, God, Hondo again. And by the end of it, you're like, Hondo. But you know he'll make the better decision in the end. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so... He's probably the most normal person there is in the entire <laughs> entire really? thing. Yeah, like if you want a taste of the real world, there's Hondo Onaka right there for yeah. you. <laughs> Keeping it real. Exactly. Exactly. So cool. So I guess we'll go ahead and we'll uh, close up the episode, guys. Just to let you know, um, we are on Twitch now, which is really exciting. Uh, it's Twitch Twitch TV slash Kesselron Weekly. We are 10 followers away from our Twitch affiliate goal, which is really exciting. That is all we have left, so 10 more of you beautiful people. Come join us over there. We uh, play games every Wednesday night uh, if you want to come hang out. Currently, we're on Battlefront 2, and uh, as soon as Fallen Order comes out, we'll be hitting that one hot and heavy for sure. So come follow us, hang out, all that good stuff. Um, and also, thank you, everyone, for listening or watching uh, to another episode of Kessel Run Weekly. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review, and we'll be happy, 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 happy to read it on a future episode. Um, 
You can also find us on social media at Kessel Run Weekly on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as our website, KesselRunWeekly.com. And Anna, where can they find you? You guys can find me on Instagram at LeGeekyLife with two eyes. I about it. I have to get on social media, but I'm coming back. She's making her comeback. Yeah. Don't call it a comeback. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a lot of cool stuff over there, guys. So definitely go check her out. Follow her. Show her some love. Let her know where you're from. All that good stuff. Um, but guys, thank you again for uh, listening or watching. And until next time, my name is Danny. I'm Kristen. I'm Anna. And may the force be with you. Always.